Hi folks, hope you're well. Welcome to this video on blood pressure and blood velocity. Okay, let's deal with a couple of things first. They could ask you in the exam, how do you calculate blood pressure or how, you know, what factors affect blood pressure? So let's put down a very quick, simple uh, calculation. Okay, there it is. Blood pressure equals blood flow times resistance, right? So how much blood is flowing through a blood vessel will affect its blood pressure but also any resistance it encounters hence why we're often told you know or we are told quite rightly not to eat diets that are high in fat because people who have fatty diets if you think you know their blood vessel walls you know there's the opening there's the lumen uh, that we've spoken about before if we eat diets that are high in fat saturated fat we get buildup of fats inside these blood vessel walls that increases the resistance and that increases our blood pressure, okay? So, you know, that's one of the factors that can affect it. Now, what I want you to do is just direct your attention over to this graph. The questions that you often get on blood pressure, let's deal with blood pressure first, which is this top graph. So ignore the bottom one. This is the blood pressure graph. Remember your terms, systolic and diastolic. Remember, systolic is the pressure in a blood vessel as the heart contracts. Systole was contraction of the heart. Diastolic is the pressure in a blood vessel as the heart relaxes. But don't worry too much about that. Don't worry about all these wiggles and jiggles at the top part. What are we really interested in? Well, if I just get a bit of a thicker... No, if I use that line there, that's absolutely fine. If I do... Oops, arteries, capillaries and veins... What we're looking at here, what's the pattern that we are looking at? Well, as you can quite rightly see, very straightforward to spot this. Let me just get my laser pointer on. Blood pressure is highest in an artery. That's where we have the highest blood pressure. As we travel into the capillaries, we find that blood pressure drops dramatically and the lowest blood pressures are in the veins. Okay? Now, what's an easy way to remember that? It was a heartbeat. The blood flows into the arteries, goes into the capillaries, through the muscles, drops off the oxygen, picks up the CO2, into the veins, and then back to the heart. So what we're we basically saying, well, what we're saying is, as blood travels further from the heart, blood pressure falls. Simple as that. So it's highest in arteries, medium in capillaries and blood pressure is lowest in veins. Simple as that. Remember, arteries, blood pumps out of the heart into arteries. The arteries break down into capillaries. Capillaries build back up into veins and veins carry blood back to the heart. So that's what we're saying. Blood pressure is highest in arteries medium levels of blood pressure in capillaries and very low blood pressure in veins, okay? Just before we quickly move on to um, blood velocity, there's one question that has come up in the past, not too long ago, which was, what factors affect blood pressure? And the question that year was, what factors affect blood pressure in arteries? Okay, three marks, I think, you know, was all it was worth. It's not going to be worth, I mean, all it was worth. It's very, very important to pick up all the marks that you can. Uh, but we're not talking about, you know, huge volumes of marks. But linking it to that diagram we've drawn above, diet affects the blood pressure. Because if I have a bad diet full of fats, okay, that's where the fatty deposits build up and that increases the resistance, okay? So as well as that, exercise, fitness, either one of those, that's going to affect my um, my blood pressure. Because those people, just with any source of fat in the body, through training, you will actually burn that fat down. So, you know, people have got high, that's your classic cholesterol. People who have high cholesterol, if they do exercise, it's going to be absolutely, you know, hugely beneficial to them. But also, you might have watched this video already, you might not. So if I advise, if you haven't watched it, please watch it straight after this. Something else, what we've been speaking about there is 
the resistance kind of things. Both these factors are to do with the resistance that you encounter and how that can affect blood pressure. What about blood flow? What can arteries do that are unique to them? They can vasodilate and they and vaso constrict. Now, please watch the, the video on vascular shunt for that. Vasodilation means that they can widen, they can open their lumen, that area across their opening. Vasodilation means they can make it wider to increase blood flow. Vasoconstriction means that lumen will get narrower to reduce blood flow. There are certain times when we want that to happen, particularly during exercise. But if I can change that, the size of that lumen through vasodilation, vasoconstriction, I can change blood flow. And if I can change blood flow, I can change blood pressure. Okay, so they're the key factors that affect blood pressure. Okay, so let's just quickly move on and finish off with blood velocity. So just a quick terminology check. Basically, when we're talking about velocity, we're talking about speed. I know any physicists in the room will be appalled with me for saying that. But for the purposes of this, just think about speed. How quickly the blood is flowing through your blood vessels. If we come back down to the diagram here, now we're looking at this bottom half here. Blood velocity, as you can see, it's slightly different. There are some similarities, but it's slightly different to the blood pressure one. What's the good thing? Well, as you can see, blood velocity is highest in the arteries, the same as blood pressure. So what can you say about arteries? Well, they have the highest pressure and they have the highest velocities. Okay, so that's quite easy. Here's where the first change comes in, though. Blood pressure was medium uh, in capillaries. It's now at its, in terms of blood velocity, that is where blood is flowing at its slowest. Okay. Now, just think about that. That is very, very important. What is the blood in capillaries doing? It is dropping off oxygen or diffusing oxygen into the muscles or the organ, and it is picking up CO2. If that blood is shooting through that capillary at a very fast speed, it is not going to be able to diffuse all of its oxygen, and it's not going to be able to pick up much CO2. So what would do? What the capillaries are doing, they are deliberately slowing the blood flow down to a very, very slow velocity so that the maximum diffusion can take place. I can diffuse all of my oxygen and I can pick up all the CO2. When it's done that, the blood will then enter the veins, which are slightly wider blood vessels, and the, and the speed, the velocity will then pick up. So that, you know, what we can say there is basically a very crude diagram. There is an artery, okay, with quite a wide lumen, widish lumen. In contrast to that, there is the waist joint of a capillary. It looks more like a number six, but, you know, I can't draw too small on this unfortunately there is a capillary in contrast to that very very narrow lumen so the blood is basically being forced into single file one cell one red blood cell at a time and you know yourself when you're in a traffic jam when you go from three lanes down to one lane everything slows down the speeds get very very slow by the time we get into a vein okay oops it is a they're slightly wider, not as wide as the arteries, but the blood velocity can pick up again, okay? So what are we saying? We are saying blood velocity is highest in arteries. It is slowest in capillaries, and it is medium in veins that is basically what we are saying okay what i'll just quickly show you now is a way that they could ask that combined with blood pressure as an exam question well you could get something like that a table that looks a little bit like that so you've got the mystery blood vessels here and then you've got blood pressure and blood velocity so blood pressure medium high low blood velocity low high medium you could get questions such as which is blood vessel C? Is it an artery, capillary, or a vein? 
So what you've got to do is you've got to either know it or through the process of deduction, figure it out. Well, the easiest one is that one B. Which one is the only one that has high blood pressure and high blood velocity? It's your artery, okay? What you're then going to do is distinguish between A and C, which is the capillary, which is the vein. Well, if we look, think back to the graph and our rules, remember, the further away you get from the heart, the more the pressure drops. So the capillaries are the ones where they will have medium blood pressure because they're not as far away from the heart as the veins are, okay? So medium pressure, but capillaries do have the lowest velocity because that's where you want the blood flow to be very, very slow so you can have diffusion take place. So blood vessel A is our capillary and blood vessel C with a very low blood pressure because that's the furthest away from the heart. But with medium blood velocity because it's got quite a wide lumen, C is our vein, okay? So you could get something like that to do with pressure and velocity.